Hey guys, Luke and Jake here with the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Today we're going to show you how to mount your trophy fish on the cheap, okay? This is a great, awesome, unique way to, to put your trophy up on the wall that doesn't waste the fish so you can still eat it and doesn't really cost hardly anything. So we're going to show you how to do Japanese gyotaku. Uh, gyotaku means fish pressing in Japanese and it is the traditional way the Japanese fishermen show off their, their trophy catch. Instead of mounting it up on the wall or having a sculpture of it, they have a pressed stamped version of the fish framed up on their wall and it's awesome. I lived in Japan for a number of years and I always thought it was so cool whenever I saw the gyotaku stamps up on the wall. And here on our last trip to Japan in July, me and Tommy saw some awesome examples of gyotaku. So definitely check those, those trips out if you want to see some awesome Japanese fishing videos. Well, me, Nathan, and Tommy went catfishing today and we caught this monster gizzard shad. Now, uh, they get bigger than this. There's places like the James River where this is kind of the average size. But in my lake, this thing is like four or five times bigger than the average shad we catch. This is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen out of that lake. So I'm going to go ahead and make a gyotaku stamp out of it. And uh, we're going to try it out. And then when I'm done, I'm going to still freeze them up and use them for bait later. Yeah, you ready to do this, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. All right, so I have never done gyotaku before. I've seen it a lot of times but I've never actually tried it, so I'm really excited to give this a go. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one is to just lay the fish down on a table and go ahead and do it that way. The other is to take cardboard and foam and, and try to, to shore up the fins, get the fins sticking out right, um, and, and try to, to make it so that the fish is cradled in like a little bit of foam and cardboard. Um, I'm not sure it makes a difference on a shad because a shad is kind of a flat fish. I think if you're working with a fish that's more naturally rounded, uh, like a pike or something, that you, you might want to do that more. But for like a bluegill or uh, a shad, it's already nice and two-dimensional. So the first thing we got to do is get the slime and water off the fish so the ink will stick to it and a dry paper towel works pretty good for that. Now the dorsal fin on gizzard shad is really cool and I really want that to, to show up on the relief. So I think I'm going to put some cardboard underneath here so that we can get that. You okay there bud? I put some paper towels underneath the fish so that the paper won't get goobered up by fish slime that might be on the cardboard. So it's a nice clean surface underneath the fish. When it comes to your inks for gyotaku, it seems like you want something that's water soluble and non-toxic. So um, Sumi Indian ink seems to be the number one choice, but uh, water soluble, non-toxic acrylic paint can also work apparently. So we're gonna we're gonna try both and see what happens. I'm gonna start with the uh, the Indian ink here and see how that goes. Oh wow, this stuff looks messy. Let's see how, how dark this is. I can add a little water to it to kind of calm it down. I've got some uh, diluted ink here. We're gonna see if that's a little bit less crazy. Punch it, that is gonna just be very dark. I think I'm going to add a lot more water to that. What little I know about gyotaku, people tell me that how much ink to add is a little bit of an art form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go like this, just kind of test it out. I'm going to use a paper towel as a little bit of a, of a tester here. I am going to try some of this black acrylic here. <laughs> Little test on the fish here. That seems a bit heavy handed. Oh, dig him, dig him. Don't grab the camera. Okay, I've got a piece of rice paper. Hey, now we're going to pull 
Okay, so this is what we got here. You notice it looks really smeared and streaked? I think my problem was it just wasn't dry enough, so we're gonna get it really dry here. There's a couple seconds with the hair dryer really made a difference. Ah, oh, there is a small hole in it though. Right there. All right, there's the first one. There's the second one. The third one, which I think came out the best but has the hole in it. And then the fourth one, which came out okay, but no holes. So, getting better. Okay, so there's a little bit of a trick to it. The paint needs to be wet enough that it spreads out and kind of runs across the fish. It doesn't pile up in big, glumpy layers. But if it's too wet, it'll kind of go down the side of the fish and pool up along the fins, and then the, the rice paper gets too wet and tears, like wet tissue paper. So I think what I need to do is keep it wet, then go back and really watch for those little pools and pick them up with a, a paper towel, and let's see how that goes. I'm gonna do one where I've watered down the paint a lot. I think that might be better. You can see it turned out really awesome. The, the key was using mostly water with a little bit of ink in it, so really, really diluted. And then on the fins, adding heavier stuff, and it worked just perfect. Look at that, that's awesome. See, look how diluted this ink is. I mean, it's really light. Tail, and the face doesn't pick up a lot of ink, so a little bit he heavier on the face. Oh, I think I've got two pieces of paper here on accident. Oh. Okay, yeah, that, that spot wasn't smart. I've spent about 45 minutes monkeying around with this and I got 11 prints done and you can definitely see a learning curve there. The first three or four were kind of garbage and then I started getting some good ones. Now I'm getting good ones every time and I feel really confident in it. And now I'm starting to, you know, see, oh, you can put a little bit more ink here and you kind of press it down like this and you start to get the technique. So yeah, it's really something that you can pick up and do at home. And, and it doesn't take a load of practice. This is my first fish, my first time ever doing Gyotaku, and I've got some really awesome prints that I'm excited to frame. Well, I'm gonna let these dry overnight, and uh, then tomorrow we're gonna go and start framing them, I'm gonna show you the finished product. Well, I've trashed the kitchen pretty good here. I think I better, I better clean up and help my wife out. But look at that, I mean, once you wash it off, the, the ink comes off, and uh, that looks just as good as if I'd never done anything to it. We'll put this in the refrigerator, we'll use it for bait, but I need a fish I did gyotaku with. Look at that. All right, so it's been a day or two and the paper's very dry. Let's, let's pull it out and take a peek. So I'm gonna take one of the ripped ones that I'm not gonna use and I'm gonna kind of practice on this thing. I'm gonna take some pen and try to put in some details um, and put in an eye and then do some writing that says like gizzard shad or something on it and we'll see how it see how it goes that actually looks pretty good well, i've got one of the prints that has a hole in it and i've been practicing on it i with the pen i put an eye on it and traced the outline and freehand wrote the uh, scientific name for american gizzard shad on there you can do all sorts of fun things with this. You can write, uh, you know, where you caught it, what lure you used, you know, the length and pounds, you know, for your fish. And if you're not comfortable freehand writing, if your clear fee's not so great, just print something off on your or computer. This, this paper's really translucent. And just take the piece of paper with the printed writing on it, lay it down, and just trace it. 
Okay, really easy to do with this rice paper. But I'm gonna take a couple more of these rejects and uh, practice on them. And once I feel like I've got it, I'm gonna try doing the, uh, the nice ones. There we go, not too shabby, huh? Looks pretty good. And uh, got this one here. Looks pretty good, I really like these. Well, I'm really pleased with how those came out. Let's uh, see about framing them. All right guys, we did it. I, uh, I, I did my first Gyotaku fish prints and I'm really excited with how they turned out. I think they look super cool. I'm gonna put one of these in my office and uh, the other one we're gonna give to Tommy's school teacher who's named Miss Shad. And apparently she had no idea that that was a fish. So we're gonna we're gonna help her out, and, and now she can know what a shad is. But um, but this is really easy, guys. It was a little bit intimidating at first. I thought it was gonna be pretty artsy and require a lot of skill. It was more intimidating than it needed to be. It's actually pretty easy. You get to do as many redos as you want. Um, that's pretty cool. And it was a huge shad. I know you guys are looking, laughing at me like I, he did a give talk to of a bait fish, but that was a legitimately big shad in my area. So, and please do not leave comments about how much bigger your shad are. I know, but <laughs> at any rate, <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. Nailed it. <laughs>